Family Theater presents Victor Jory and Bobby Driscoll. From Hollywood, the Mutual Network, in cooperation with Family Theater, presents Shot in the Dark, starring Bobby Driscoll. And now, here is your host, Victor Jory. Thank you, Tony Lafrano. Family Theater's only purpose is to bring to everyone's attention a practice that must become an important part of our lives if we are to win peace for ourselves, peace for our families, and peace for the world. Family Theater urges you to pray. Pray together as a family. And now to our transcribed drama, Shot in the Dark, starring Bobby Driscoll as Hush. This is the most I've ever seen. What is? The lame, the halt, and the blind, right enough. That's what they're down to now. I swear, old man, sometimes you're hard to understand. Uh, to some, I reckon. But I figured a boy like you would kid me right enough. There's a kind of understanding between the very young and the very old, I've heard. And I'm not so awful young, and I wish you'd quit harping on it. The Northerners are fighting to free the slaves. And we're fighting for the right to secede. We ain't even fighting the same war. And we've lost it anyway. We haven't. We haven't lost it. Not by a long shot. Yeah, you're even younger than you look, aren't you, boy? I'm young enough to have faith in the Confederacy. Young enough to go on fighting. Go on believing in what I started out believing in. You old men make me sick. You're tired before we start on a march, and you're ready to turn turtle first time some no-good Yankee fires a shot. I wouldn't know that. Nobody's fired a shot at me yet. I mean when it happens. You want to know what I think? I've heard what you think. I don't think this company's going to hear any shots being fired. That's what I think. That's all you know. You think maybe they're... Saving us for something? They could be. Our boys fought all the way to Pennsylvania. And now we're sitting around our fires getting ready to defend Georgia. The war's over. We've lost, boy. Sherman and his blue coats aren't going to stop till they see the ocean. General Lee, he'll think of something to turn those dirty Yankees. He's a great man. Oh, go away, boy. Go away. You're too muddle-headed for me to talk to. I'd sooner sit alone. I shouldn't be wasting my time talking to you anyway. It's you that's muddled. Go away. Go bother somebody else. All right. All right, I will. I'll just keep the, the, the salt I was going to give you. What do you think of that? Salt? Oh. <laughs> go away, boy, go away. Old man like that, what's he know? What's he know about anything? General Sherman's gonna march all the way. Hush, puppy. Hey. Who's that? Over here. It's me, TJ. Oh. Did I hear you say something about Saul? Oh, that. You really got some? Nah. No, I was just trying to spite old man Gander. I thought as much. You on guard duty? Yeah. I'm not supposed to talk to anybody, but I guess it'll be all right. Walk along with me. Uh, I, I don't know as I should. Come on. It gets kind of spooky walking in these woods alone. Captain Miles, he said we might be falling back on Savannah for special duty. Savannah? I've never been to Savannah. Me neither. You don't look too happy about the idea. There's no Yankees in Savannah. 
Well, there's no Yankees here. What's the difference? I heard they're not too far away. Say, I'm getting cold, TJ. I, I think I'll go back by one of the fires. Ah, it's not that cold. Walk along with me for a little bit. It's easy for you to say. You, you got a good coat. You call this a coat? Well, it's more than I got. You know what we ought to do, Hush? What? We ought to get you a coat. And get me a decent one, too, while we're about it. Well, how could we do a thing like that? Same way Arlen Thomas got his. You mean off a Yankee? Why not? You haven't got your yank yet, have you? No. I haven't either. What say we sneak off and see what we can do? Well, ah, uh, 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 there ain't a Yankee within ten miles of here. There's bummers. How are you gonna find bummers? Just sit out and look for them, I guess. You there. You. Uh oh Guard. That's Captain Miles. I'm gonna take off. Don't try it, boy. Which one of you boys is sentry? I was just walking my post, Captain, sir. And I seen him and asked him who goes there. Talking to the sentry. Oh, well, I don't suppose it makes much difference now. Sir? We'll be falling back on Savannah tomorrow sometime. We can fight, sir. We can show them dirty Yankees a thing or two. When we get in battle, you'll see. Boy, I don't aim to give this company a chance at battle. And Colonel Goss feels the same way about it. That's why we'll be falling back tomorrow. Colonel Goss's orders, sir? They're the orders I asked him to give me. But why, sir? That's something you don't ask in war, boy. But as long as you have, I'll tell you. Because eight miles that way, the 9th Iowa and the 111th Illinois, seasoned outfits, are getting ready to jump on us. I don't want your blood on my hands. Does that answer your question? Yes, sir. It does. Better get some rest. Long march tomorrow. Yes, sir. Guess we'd better not talk anymore, Hush. So he thinks we're not good enough, huh? Maybe we'll just show him a thing or two, Hush. Maybe we will, TJ. Maybe we will. Hush. Where are you? I'm right here. I thought I'd lost you for a minute. You figure they know we're gone? We'll be back before they know a thing. What'd you say, the 9th Iowa? Yeah, and the hundred and something from Illinois. Well, they're both seasoned outfits anyway. I remember that part. You scared? Me? <laughs> you sound scared. Nah. It, it's this old gun. It takes me too long to load and fire. Except for that, it wouldn't matter to me how big a bunch we ran into. Oh, would you? Well, it wouldn't. I used to be able to pot a squirrel plumb through the eye. Wonder which way we go now. That way. Awful dark. How do you know? I just live around here, that's how. Around here? A couple miles that way. But how do you know that's the right way? Because Captain Miles pointed northeast, and that's the way the road goes. Now, come on. All right. All right. Boy, the way you move a body think you were after General Grant himself. You think we ought to stay on the road? If we're going to get our Yanks. I think we'll have to stay on the road. I, I, I don't know. You are scared. No, Hush, really I'm not. But I've heard things, that's all. What things? That the Yanks, that they sometimes wait by a road and, and then, well, you know. Ambush? I heard about a lot of our boys getting killed that way. Uh, I think you're making that up. I'm not, Hush, I swear I'm not. Stop where you are! What did I tell you? What did I tell you? It's only a woman. It's Yankees, I know it is. Now, TJ! Let go of me! I said let go of me! <laughs> If you got any sense, you'll run too. I warned you. Did I get him? No, ma'am. Missed him clean. You stay where you are. I won't miss you. I'm afraid you used up your load, ma'am. You keep back just the same. Yes, ma'am. You're, you're awful young to be a bummer. I'm not a bummer. I'm with the Georgia Special Reserves. Name's Hezekiah Tana. Hezekiah Tana? Yes, ma'am. Then you got another name, haven't you? Well, haven't you? Yes, ma'am. What is it? Well, when I was a tad, they, they called me Hush Puppy. Step over here in this patch of moonlight. I want to see your face. Yes, ma'am. 
Yeah. Same eyes. Same mouth as your father. I allow you who you say you are. You knew my father, ma'am? Yeah. He used to hunt with my man. He spoke of you often enough. He's dead now. So's my man. Died with the first Georgia. I'm sorry. Being sorry don't do no good. Have there been any bummers around here? Not around here. Up the road a mile or so. The Sims place. Don't know it, ma'am. Mm. Bummers swooped down on them like the outlaws they are. Took everything they could lift. Not around here, though. Mm. Rumor is that your Georgia special reserves are gonna hold the line. Last thing the thieving bummers would do would be to get close to fighting. Hold the line. I didn't rightly hear you. The Georgia Special Reserves are pulling back to Savannah tomorrow afternoon. If... If I was a Yankee sympathizer, that would be valuable information to have, wouldn't it, Hezekiah? Well, you wouldn't. I might. It's possible. But you're... you're Georgian. First of all, I'm a woman. And I'm sick to death of all this killing. Oh, don't worry. I won't let your secret out. But I might if I thought it would save a few lives. Yes, even Yankee lives. You'd save Yankees? Is that so terrible? Haven't you heard about the terrible things they do? I don't set much store by gossip. And I don't think they'd do anything our boys wouldn't do. They're men. And men are pretty much the same all over. Where are you going? Back to Savannah with your company? No, ma'am. I'm going to get me a yank. Must be getting close to him now. Just my luck to stumble into the whole Yankee army. Captain Miles said, a good soldier fights with his ears. All right, listen, Hush. Listen. Don't hear nothing. A little farther. Now, listen again. Listen real hard. There's something out there. Might be a possum. C could be a... Too big. Yank. That's what it is. It's a yank. Now make sure it ain't ten of them, hush. I see you, Mr. Yankee. And I'll teach you to go making more in Georgia. Now you just stand still. Where's that front sight? Spot it on the moonlight. Then swing it over and cock it. Who's there? And fire! <laughs> I got him! By Jiminy's, I got him! I got me a yank. Get him good. Where is he? Wait till Saunders sees. Oh. Oh, God Almighty, what have I done? Oh, Lord, Lord. I, I didn't go to do it. I mean, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I killed him. I killed a man. Uh, you shot me. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> My chest. Like huh, hot soup. Here now, I'll, I'll bind it up. Wait. Your shirt. It's all I have. I'll help. No, you stay put. I'll do it. I know how. I think. When I was hurt on the farm, my father did this. Uh, am, I, am I gonna die? I don't know. But does it hurt much? It burns. When I finish binding it, then it might be better. You said, on the farm. You a farmer? I'm a soldier. I was a farmer. I'm a farmer. Your uniform. Oh. Now I'm a soldier, but I was a farmer. <laughs> You're surprised. I had a little place near Germantown. <laughs> Would have been nice to see again. Maybe 
Maybe you will see it again. Do you think you can walk? Uh, don't think so. Uh, no. No. Can't even get up. Then I'll have to carry you. I'm heavy. It's all right. I'm strong for my age. Yeah. Now you hold around my neck. Yeah. Yeah, I'm holding. We go. There. Back to your company? It's too far. I, I think I know someone who'll take care of you. <laughs> It's in his chest, but it's not a second wound. Ma'am? No bubbles in the wound. And the ball went through. He may be all right. He's got to be all right. You'll have to help. What can I do? I'll have to tend him night and day. I'll do whatever you say. Will you take care of the farm while I tend him? If I, if I do that... I won't be able to go back to Savannah with my company. And they'll mark you as a deserter. But I still have to ask you to stay. I'll stay. I'll tend your farm. As a deserter, you might not be able to live in this part of the country again. I, I guess I don't aim to try, ma'am. You'll go away? I thought I was a soldier. I went about doing the job they gave me to do. Yes, I just wasn't big enough to do it. In that way, I don't reckon I'm a soldier. But I guess I can take my medicine like a soldier. Like a man, he, even if I'm not either one of those things yet. Maybe you're not a soldier. Maybe you were never meant to be one, Hezekiah. <laughs> You feeling better today? Yeah, feel good. A little pain here. But not so much as two weeks ago. Another week and I think maybe I'll go back to Germantown. No reason not to, I reckon. Now that General Lee surrendered. Yeah. Stopped to collect my back pay first. Think maybe that, uh, with that I'll start my barn. Big white one. Back to farming. <laughs> You proved to me that I'm a better farmer than a soldier. So am I. I'm very sorry about all this. Ah. You were doing your duty. No man should apologize for that. But... Well, I wasn't just doing my duty. I, I wanted to tell you that before I go. You see, I I'd gone out just to get my yank. To get your yank? to prove to everybody that I could do it. But I was a soldier. Everybody was saying, they all said the war was ending. I was afraid it'd end before I'd fired a shot. Uh, where are you going? West, I think. You're not gonna do what you said? Go back and give yourself up? Nobody to give myself up to. War's over. Well, thanks for not being a good soldier. I'm glad I'm not. Bye. Goodbye, Hush. Hezekiah? Yes, ma'am. I fixed you a little something to eat along the way. Well, I'm obliged to you, ma'am. Not much. Just some bread and fat back and, and some hush puppies. I remember from when your father used to brag on you. He said you liked them. Yes, ma'am. That's how I got the nickname. I don't think they'll call you that anymore. Think not, ma'am? It's something you call a child. You're not a child anymore. You proved that when you got your yank. Because I fired first? Oh, no. 
because you learned to be unselfish, because you were willing to do what you knew was right in spite of what you thought it might cost. Goodbye, Hezekiah. Goodbye. And thank you, ma'am. This is Victor Jory again. I've had some wonderful experiences in my life, but I would rank high among them that of hearing a symphony orchestra playing some of my own compositions. To hear the cellos throbbing with warmth over the notes you wrote, to hear the violins singing the melody in muted appeal, to hear the horns enriching each phrase and bar, well, it's like giving creation back to the creator. Yes, they'll tell you music is the universal language, and it does approach it. But I think there's a much more universal language. Prayer. From the infant lisping phrases newly learned and not yet quite understood, to the old person dying on a bed of pain with life's meaning now clearer before dimming eyes, there's a symphony for you far above mere man to comprehend. In such a symphony, there are no scratchy fiddles. No untuned strings or broken reeds. Just one vast harp, the harp of a thousand strings. Each voice of prayer is a voice in tune, for it is tuned to the infinite concert master who hears every pulsing string and every throbbing note, every gentle rhythm and tender harmony. Every family at prayer is such a symphony. And during this week of weeks, let us remember that the family that prays together stays together. More things are wrought by prayer than this world dreams of. From Hollywood, Family Theater has brought you transcribed Shot in the Dark, starring Bobby Driscoll. Victor Jory was your host. Featured in our cast were John Stevenson, George Peroni, Margaret Brayton, and Dick Wilson. The script was written and directed for Family Theater by Robert Hugh O'Sullivan, with music composed and conducted by Harry Zimmerman. This series of Family Theater broadcasts is made possible by the thousands of you who feel the need for this type of program, by the mutual network which has responded to this need and by the hundreds of stars of stage, screen, and radio who give so unselfishly of their time and talent to appear on our family theater stage. To them and to you, our humble thanks. This is Tony Lafrano expressing the wish of family theater that the blessing of God may be upon you and your home and inviting you to join us next week when family theater will present... The Spy. Join us, won't you? Family Theater is broadcast throughout the world and originates in the Hollywood studios of the world's largest network. This is Mutual, the radio network for all America.